How's it going, gents? Stand in the door 1944. Today we're going to be going over the best method to CC2 treat a uniform for a Normandy impression. Let's get into it. So CC2 treating a uniform is an absolute critical aspect to putting together a historically accurate Normandy impression. The reason for this is because nearly every American trooper going into Normandy, whether they be paratrooper, infantry, armor, artillery, glidermen, you name it, almost every American going into Normandy had a CC2 treated uniform. The reason for this is because the Allies were worried that the Germans were going to be using chemical weapons similar to the way that they did in World War I. And in order to combat that, not only were troopers being issued gas masks, they were also being issued anti-gas uniforms. And what I mean by an anti-gas uniform is that chemical weapons such as mustard gas not only affect a person's lungs, but they also create chemical burns. So the army needed to come up with some way to protect their troopers, not only just their lungs, but also their full body bodies against chemical weapons. And so the Army's reaction to that was coming up with the CC2 compound. So all troopers were ordered to turn in one set of their uniforms to be CC2 treated. And basically what that means is all the uniforms were taken and then they were dumped into big boiling vats of CC2 compound. And then they would be pulled out and then they would allow the compound to actually soak into the fabric of the uniform, which would essentially make it airtight and thus protect it against chemical weapons. So not only that we have documentation from the Army stating that they CC2 treated uniforms for Normandy, we also have significant photographic evidence proving this. Taking the paratrooper M42 jumpsuit as a prime example, if we look at photographs of paratroopers before Normandy, you see this bright, crisp, clean M42 jumpsuit. Whereas whenever you see troopers that are in Normandy or just preparing to jump into Normandy, you see that their uniforms are significantly different. You can see that they're quite a bit darker, they look almost damp, and you see quite a bit of white residue in various locations around the uniform. We see this not only in original black and white photographs, but also especially in the few original color images that we have. So a shout out to Mark Bando for providing these original color images from Captain Doc Loggy, who is the surgeon for the 502nd PIR jumping into Normandy. He was one of the few troopers who got away with sneaking a camera into country and taking original photographs. So over the years, reenactors have used several different methods for simulating CC2 treatment on their uniform. However, the problem with this is a lot of those methods are using materials that are either one, detrimental to a person's health, or two, they actually could shorten the life span on the uniform. And as reenactors, because we're paying for these uniforms out of our own pocket, we want to make them last as long as possible. So the problem with using a material like deck sealant is deck sealant is made to go on wood. It's made to prolong the life of wood. It's not made to go on fabric, much less go on your skin. So I really suggest people not using that particular method and finding a method that's really been tested and tried many, many times and proven to great success. And so what I've found over the years that works the best is otter wax. This is a really an amazing product and the benefit of it is wax has been used to treat fabric for literally hundreds of years. It's been used to treat fabric, it's been used to treat leather, so it's really a tried and true method where you know it's not going to hurt your uniform and it's not going to be detrimental to your health either. So without further ado, let's get into the materials of what we're going to need to actually CC2 treat your uniform. So first off, you're going to need your uniform itself. For today's example, we're going to be using a brand new set of M42s from at the front. Now next is going to be your otter wax. Now, whenever it comes time for you to purchase this otter wax, I do want to ask you to consider purchasing it directly from the Stand in the Door 1944 website. Reason being is because you can get that otter wax from us for the exact same price that you can get it from anywhere else, including Amazon. So not only are you getting a good price on it, your patronage on that website and your purchasing of my products gives us more opportunity to provide quality products for the historical community, as well as it helps support the YouTube channel so that we can keep providing you with good content. And I suggest you using two to three bars of otter wax. Rule of thumb, I suggest using one bar per article of clothing. So one bar for your jacket and one bar for your trousers. And then the third bar is really to go back and do touch up work. So in areas where you might find where it's a little bit lighter in certain areas, you missed a spot and so forth, you can go through with that third bar and you can fill in those gaps. So after your otter wax, you're gonna need a heat source. 
And for heat source, there's really three different options you can use. First off, you can just use the dryer that's down in your washroom in your house. That method can work really, really well. I do suggest turning the jacket inside out like I'll show you in the video. But then also, if you happen to have a cloth laundry bag, that can really be a good option as well, just to keep all the wax and so forth within the uniform and not getting into your dryer. The second option is going to be just a traditional hair dryer. The benefits of this is most people have one of these in your house. Uh, the problem with it though is it doesn't kick out that much heat. So it does take a little bit of time and a bit more time than you probably want to spend on the uniform. But the third method that works probably the best is going to be a heat gun. Now the advantages of this is you can pick up a heat gun from Lowe's or Home Depot for $30 or $40. So it's pretty inexpensive. And the thing is, is exceptionally useful for World War II reenacting. Uh, not only does it help you CC2 treat your uniform, you can also use this to help treat your leather items as well. So talking about your rifle sling, any pistol holsters and so forth, uh, you can apply your oil and then use this heat gun to help the leather absorb that oil. And it's an exceptionally useful tool. One trick that I do want to give you before we CC2 treat this uniform is that is to remove any shoulder patches off of the uniform itself. Now note, originally in World War II, they would have turned in their uniforms in whatever state they were in to be CC2 treated. They would have had patches, they might have had rank insignia and so forth. They didn't care. However, for World War II reenacting, at some point you might want to change over your patch from 101st to 82nd. You might put an 82nd arm flag on there any various number of patches or shoulder insignia that you could put on this uniform, whenever you go to remove the shoulder patch or the flag, whatever it is that you have on the uniform that you're wanting to take off or change, whenever you remove it, there's going to be a bald spot of CC2 on that uniform. So what we want to do is CC2 it without any shoulder insignia on it, and then CC2 treat the rank separately. So that way they're both CC2 treated, but one is laid over the top of the other. So if you ever wanna change out that patch at a later date, you can do so without any additional work to your uniform. So without any further ado, let's jump into the method. So now we've got our uniform ready to go. So we're gonna take our otter wax and it's pretty simple and straightforward. You literally just take it and you can just start rubbing the wax into the uniform. You can start anywhere that you want, but be sure and get pretty much anywhere on the uniform. So that means getting into the pockets, getting underneath the epaulets. And as you can see how much darker the uniform already is on this side compared to this side, and I've literally just started. So we're going to be waxing all the way across this. Now keep in mind, you don't have to do this absolutely perfectly. Whenever you go to put this in the dryer, it's going to help to disperse this wax. Uh, so you don't have to worry about getting it 100% even all the way across. But as you can see, I'm gonna be getting pretty heavily into the seams of the uniform and up into the creases, up into the pencil pocket. Here's a place where you can use that two by four And see that 2x4 just helps give you a nice, even, flat surface to rub this wax across. So here we are at the halfway point for the jacket, and there's a few things that I want to point out. Obviously, uh, would be the inside of the pockets. We want to be sure to get the inside of the pocket flap, uh, get in between the pocket flap and the actual pocket itself, and get some wax up here in this seam, because as you go to open this pocket to get a map or get whatever, you don't want there to be any untreated fabric. Now, you don't have to get deep down inside, uh, but just on the outside uh, to the point where if you open it, somebody can see it, be sure that that's treated. And it's the same thing for the inside of this pocket down here. Also be sure and get underneath each flap of the pocket like this, because if you don't treat it like this, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. And really you can see this whenever you're wearing the jacket. So that is one place that you'll want to be sure and catch. Also note to get the inside of the zipper flap itself. If you don't get this inside of the zipper flap, especially if you carry a switchblade here in this top pocket here, your pocket's gonna wanna kinda hold open a little bit and you will be able to see this. So be sure that you treat that as well. Also be sure and get underneath your epaulets, underneath your collar, because every once in a while your collar might flip up. And then you'll also want to get 
uh, on the inside of the switchblade pocket as well. So at this stage of the project, it's where I wanna show you how you can do the heat gun method. Like I said, this method takes a bit longer. Really, the, the tried and true method is to just go and put it in your dryer, but the heat gun can be helping, especially if you're trying to do like little detail spots and so forth, or you're doing little patchwork. Uh, but this is to show you kind of how effective it can be. So we're gonna take this and we'll turn it up on high. So as you can see in places like this where it's kind of built up, as it heats, watch how the fabric just soaks up all that wax. Make sure we get up under the flap. So this is a really interesting stage to look at the jacket. So as you can see on this side, we obviously have the untreated fabric. Uh, and then on this side, we've got the two different stages of seeing the CC2 treatment with otter wax. So on this part of it uh, is after the, the wax has been applied and dried and actually soaked into the fabric. And this is what it looks like whenever it's freshly applied. So as that wax is initially put in, before we touch it with a heat gun or before we put it into the dryer, this is what this jacket it looks like it looks really damp it looks really wet and so forth but then whenever it dries it really soaks in and yes it still does have a damp effect but it's no longer wet it's no longer oily to the touch so it doesn't feel strange whenever you touch this jacket so don't be alarmed whenever you're putting on the initial stages of wax if you do any tests and so forth uh, don't be put off by what it looks like or what it feels like whenever it's wet before it's soaked in. Go ahead and wait until after it gets dried and that's whenever you're gonna see exactly what it looks like. And then after it's dried, whenever you see uh, that you've missed certain areas, you know, like under a pocket, you can go through and retouch those areas and you can hit them with the heat gun or you can put them back in the dryer. So treating the back of your M42s, a couple places to keep in mind is to be sure to get inside the giant pleat here in the back, as well as get under the wings of the shoulders, as those are gonna be pretty apparent as you wear the jacket. So be sure and apply wax accordingly. Another good thing to note, as you begin to push this wax and rub it in, you're gonna be starting to get a little bit of a knife edge here. And this can be really useful whenever you're trying to get into those tighter nooks and crannies. So you do the, the basically the flat edge whenever you're doing large areas. But then if you're trying to get deeper into a seam, you can flip it over and then use kind of the point or the sharper end of that bar of wax. And it's gonna push the wax deeper into where you're trying to get it. Another method that I've seen that people have done with otter wax is they've actually taken these bars and melted them down into a pot and then gone and applied uh, the otter wax with a paintbrush. And although that is a, an okay method, it is easier to spread the wax that way. It's kind of not my favorite because whenever you first take that paintbrush and you apply it to your fabric, there's gonna be a lot of otter wax buildup at the top of that brush stroke. And then as it continues down, that brush stroke, the otter wax in it is going to dissipate. So it's much more difficult to get an even coating across your whole uniform. And yes, it's true, you are not trying to make these uniforms perfect. This is a very imperfect process. But if you do get just like a big splotch of otter wax, I mean, there's not a whole lot that you can do about that, and it is gonna alter the look of what potentially you might wanna do. So personally, the bar method, you just have a lot more control over what this looks like on your uniform. Okay, fellas, so we just finished otter waxing the whole uniform, front, back, inside the pleats, under the pockets, everywhere that you can see the uniform. Yes, you. If you really wanted to be all that gung-ho, you could open this thing all the way up and treat the inside of it as well, but I highly suggest you do not do that from a comfort standpoint. That might feel kind of funny on your skin, might make the uniform a little bit hotter, so I would suggest just doing the outside anywhere that you can see. So maybe if you wanted to get some of the inside of your collar, depending on how low you put your zipper down, that's just something that you can keep in mind. But anyways, at this stage in the game, if you remember, we've already done the heating element on this portion portion of the jacket here, but everywhere else the wax is still on the very surface of the jacket. So it's the time that we apply our heat element to it. We could 
bust our heat gun back out and we could do the entire uniform like this. But again, personally, I don't really like that method because it takes so long. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and button and fasten all the different fasteners, buckles, zippers, and so forth on the whole uniform. Yay, so. Button these. All the pockets are done. We fasten the belt, obviously. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna turn the uniform completely inside out. Okay, now that we've turned the whole uniform inside out, it's time that we're gonna go and put it in the dryer. So the first off, the reason that we're turning the uniform inside out is because by doing that, we're keeping all the wax basically contained inside the uniform. So that way, whenever we put it into the barracks bag and then put it into the dryer and the heat starts to get to it, all that wax is gonna be melting and it's gonna be soaking into the fabric, but it's still going to be staying on the outer shell of the jacket. It's not gonna be wasting off and falling and getting onto the garment. It's not going to be getting out into the dryer and so forth. So turning your uniform inside out is absolutely key to this process. So at this point, we're going to take this. We'll just wad it up. Shove it into our barracks bag. Tie that up. And now we're gonna go down, we're gonna put this into the dryer for about 15 or 20 minutes on the high heat setting. And whenever it comes out, it should be perfect. Okay, so this just came out of the dryer. We ended up doing two 20 minute cycles. Whenever we did just one 20 minute, there was still a bit of wax and we wanted to melt it a bit more before we ended up taking it out. So we put it in for two 20 minute cycles and we'll see how it came out. Turn it right side out. And I can already tell just by feeling the inside of the jacket that it is much better because it actually feels dry. If you still feel the wax on the outside of the jacket, you haven't melted it enough. It needs to be melted into the fabric. So that's looking pretty good. Really, it's kind of down to the last two steps. And that is, first off, is go ahead and just run your hand down and feel if you can feel any areas that still feel dampy and still feel like the slight tackiness from the wax. And as you run into those areas, you can hit those with the heat gun again and treat that. And the heat gun is immediately going to take that away. So now that we've gone over the jacket for the last time and made sure there aren't any additional spots of wax that need to be melted, we're able to go on to the last step. Now, a lot of people will stop at this point, and that's okay, but there's really an additional element, and this is that kind of secret ingredient that I mentioned earlier, and that is spackle. So you can go and pick this up at Lowe's or Home Depot for three, four, five dollars. Uh, and this stuff is what makes all the difference in the world to making a super accurate CC2 uh, simulation on your jacket. And so what you're going to do is you can get this spackle and you're just going to mop it on in some of the seam areas along the jacket. And it's just kind of in build up spots where the wax liked to build up. Uh, on the uh, on the seams and so forth and you can go through and put those in more or less the same spots You can just kind of randomly put it around the jacket at the seams Any other place where that CC2 Would have been doing buildup. It's really good in the crease of the pockets up at the top of the pocket as well as going in along the reinforcing of the jacket pockets so we just fill in some of these little areas around in here. So at this stage in the game, the jacket is really gonna look like crap. Whenever you see all these white spotches around your uniform, you're not gonna like it. And don't worry, we're not done yet. So at this stage, we go through these white spotches. They need to be blended with the rest of the uniform. Either they, otherwise, they just look like you've put white stuff on your uniform. So we're gonna take the last little bit of wax that we have for the jacket here, and you just, Put that over the top of that wax. If there's any areas where you've got a little extra uh, of that uh, uh, spackle, you just put this wax on 
over the top of it. And then we take the heat gun back out and we hit the heat gun with it. And it's gonna dissipate some of that extra wax along with that spackle. You can also wipe out some of that excess with your fingers as well. So there's the jacket after we've done the last step, which is the spackling trick. So we put on a little bit of the spackle, go through, put a little more wax over the top of the spackle once it dries, and that's going to dissipate some of it. You can take other parts of the jacket, such as the cuff, and you can use that to kind of move some of that dry spackle and wax around throughout the jacket and so it dissipates it so it's leaving you a little bit of white residue around where those seams are and that's what really sells the cc2 simulation on a jacket if you look at a lot of original photographs such as lieutenant mcdowell standing in his plane you can very clearly see the white residue on his pockets and around different spots on his uniform where you can see the residue from that cc2 chemical as being left on the actual uniform itself. Well, gents, I hope that you've enjoyed that video. I know that CC2 treating a uniform is a new and, a, and somewhat scary experience for some of you. Taking a brand new $200 uniform and asking you to go and rub wax all over it might be intimidating, but I hope that this tutorial has helped make it easier, and it's also given you information that's proven what a crucial element CC2 treating your uniform is for making an accurate Normandy impression. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.